Param Shanti. Today I will reveal about Gan Ganj located in the Himalayas to the Beha children. Gan Ganj is a subtle dimension in the Himalayas where many variety of souls reside in their different globes. These spheres start from the lower part of the land, say from Haridwar, then ascending upwards to Gangotri, Yamunotri, Badrinath, Kedarnath and also at temples of Shiv Shankar. Wherever there are temples of Shiva Bolinath, the three elemental souls do lot of tapasya or meditation in order to ascend in the higher dimensions. So some good souls keep roaming in the villages and cities and invite all the disembodied souls to come along with them to the four sacred places, so called Chardham for pilgrimage. They say, we will take you beyond Haridwar to the Chardham Yatra. Usually there are at least two to four pious souls who had followed the religious path of devotion to God in their earthly lifetime in every village. Such souls feel that the subtle world is full of illusions and so these souls agree to go with the spiritual guide souls instead of roaming around the world in the form of ghosts and spirits. There are very good noble souls who keep looking out in every village or city to guide the disembodied souls and they create a globe of say 500 or 1000 souls and take them away. Sometimes these subtle globes may contain 2000, 5000 or 10,000 souls or even 50,000 very good souls searched and brought in from the villages and cities to be taken upwards into the Himalayas for their onward spiritual journey. From their globes, the souls are first shown the sacred places such as Haridwar etc. The globe rises slowly into the higher level of 1 km, 2 km or 3 km as the souls practice meditations. Some devotional souls keep chanting Mahadev slokas or mantras. Souls develop Nastamuha or detachment stage as they have already left home for the sake of obtaining vision of Mahadeva Shiva. This is the main reason for good souls to go onto the subtle globes. The divine vision is obtained on Kailash Mansarubar, Kailash Mountain. I have mentioned about this in my several earlier videos that even at present time Lord Mahadev and Mata Shakti Parvati reside in their subtle form along with their family. The pure hearted true devotee souls can get darshana or vision of Shiva Parvati at Man Sarubar even today. However, there are very few such truly devoted souls. Eventually, sitting in their globes at Kalash Mansarovar, these subtle souls dedicate themselves totally to meditation for long periods of time. Therefore, this place is called Gyan Ganj. There are many human beings, apart from the subtle souls, who long for help or guidance on their meditation. There are many seekers who opt to meditate from caves in the Himalayas. Such seekers are inspired by rays from the subtle guide souls who take them to the Gyan Ganj globes. The uplifting experience of these Gyan Ganj globes makes the person to stay there itself. Many human beings reside there. There are quite a number of people who experience the divine presence on traveling to the Himalayas. The subtle dimension around the Himalayan region is spread out in a vast manner in all four directions. Over here, many subtle souls reside in these layers in their globes 
with their groups and practice meditation. Slowly and slowly, they gain power from Mahadev over a period of time. As they gain power, the globe gradually moves upwards. For example, 2 km, 3 km, 4 km, 5 km or even 10 km above Mount Kailash. After reaching 50 km or 100 km above, they start to gain speed in their spiritual growth. They gain more power and attain detachment stage or the stage of Nasta Moha. They are taught to stay in the remembrance of Lord Mahadev in the higher dimension. They have understanding that Lord Mahadev, Shankar Parvati and Shiva Shakti are the same identity as Lord Mahadev or Shankar is the corporeal form or Sakari form of Shiva. By constantly staying in the remembrance of Lord Shiva, souls get more power and attain total detachment and desireless stage of higher consciousness. They are given knowledge that Shiva Puri is above in the higher realm. So, the souls have only one aim that is to go above in the higher dimension. These souls put lot of efforts to practice meditation and gain spiritual power. Gradually, the power of all souls in the globe accumulates to become single force. The souls become desireless and everyone's aim is to go to the higher realm. Due to the collective thoughts of all souls and the power accumulated in the globe, the globe gradually flies higher and higher. The globe moderately speeds up during the flight and reaches 100 million kilometers above the earth. From here on, the souls in their spiritual globes keep ascending slowly into the higher and higher dimensions. By all this, we mean to say that Himalayas are very mysterious place and the atmosphere of Himalaya is very spiritual, full of deep knowledge and therefore known as Gyan Ganj. Similarly, the Amarnath cave where Lord Shankar had imparted sacred divine knowledge to his consort Parvati is also a mysterious place. You all are well aware about this popular legend in Bhakti Marg. In this story, a Devta took on the appearance of a dove so that he could hear the sacred conversation between Lord Shankar and Parvati. Upon noticing this intruder, Shankar threw his famed weapon, the Trishul, at Devta so that no one could, should be able to hear the sacred knowledge. So, it should be clear by now that subtle souls, especially the souls from Hindu religion, are present all over this region and meditate here. However, many times powerful negative beings called Asuras especially those negative souls from the subtle world who are against Hindu religion reach at these spiritual spots and disturb the meditating subtle souls. Here on earth, souls belonging to different religions, muds, sects, etc. always fight with each other. Similarly, even in the subtle world, such negative souls are present just above the atmosphere of earth at two kilometers or three kilometers range they oppose the subtle seeker souls and impede their progress by not allowing them to meditate or by obstructing the spiritual globes from rising to the higher level above himalayas this happens only in the lower astral range the ascension of Gola, where very spiritual subtle yogi souls reside, cannot be stopped for long. Protection and healing help is provided from highly powerful 
guardian souls who reside in their own powerful spheres and do not allow the asuras to go beyond 2 to 3 kilometers above the earth layer so where there are positive and very good quality souls present there are also negative and demonic souls who disturb the spiritual ascension into the upper layers everywhere such demons or asuras can be found in the world who are full of the vices of lust anger greed etc these asuras do not want anyone to ascend higher and due to the vices present in them they are called asur we can see such demons in the physical world as well as in the subtle world too where they initiate wars modern advancements in the scientific field and art whether development of nuclear bomb or any other are always due to the help from subtle world souls it has already been mentioned in our scriptures about such advanced sciences quite a number of scientists who incarnate on earth are inspired by one or the other subtle world souls these scientists study our different granthas and gather the information ancient techniques from these ancient books an example of this is the brahmastra the deadly ancient weapon which could be activated by mantra power there was so much energy and power in the brahmastra a huge amount of heat would be generated from such powerful missiles killing thousands of soldiers immediately some weapons are so advanced that upon using one missile it would split into numerous others so that each and every one in the battlefield would be destroyed the purpose and complete descriptions of making such weapons through the power of mantra are given in our scriptures so all this knowledge was written down by our sages and munis in ancient times in the sastras and these are extremely valuable information many sastras have separate sub manuscripts called upanishads for example there is the bhiman sastra and other different ones and these are all read carefully even now the ancient sages and munis knew that destruction is close in the future ages and they will not be able to stop it the reason being on this earth the continuous cycle of destruction creation and dissolution has always been eternal artha pralay pralay kalp pralay mahakal pralay all these have been occurring over the ages this has been described as niyati or destiny this is why the sadhus and the saints do not disturb this cycle since it has been predetermined such as the occurrence of destruction in this sense the third world war is an inevitable occurrence it has been the destiny in the religious path of bhakti then after destruction another destruction and so on at present the atmosphere of whole world is charged with thoughts of destruction and dissolution various religions the different sects mats and bhakti mark people as well as in the whole world people are talking about third world war and destruction they think it's cosmic fate because till date such events have been taking place over and over the ages on this earth during certain times the gods would create destruction by sending a huge asteroid 
a create mega floods for enabling destruction process. This was called Jal Pralay and was done several times by Lord Indra, the king of gods. The lords of five elements such as water, air, fire, earth and ether would always create destruction on some part of the earth or the other. This has always been known to all, including the souls of subtle world. Needless to say that destruction has always been occurring upon this earth periodically and has been called as fate. Niyati or destiny means a predetermined set of events, events occurring due to nature. Therefore, it has been established as a natural occurrence of events of destruction, creation, and dissolution. The events occurring over a period of time in our solar system and our earth was known to our rishis and munis. For example, with the passing of four yugas, half dissolution and full dissolution would occur without fail. In addition to this, the heavenly gods were the controller of the earth. Whenever they desire, they would bring up about destruction to occur through mass flooding on earth. Bayudevta would create powerful cyclone or even subtle world souls group up together to bring about cyclone on any part of the earth. So, it was always considered as natural cause for destruction. Even the negative souls come together and initiate destruction, not only on earth, but also in the subtle world. So, all this destruction keeps happening again and again, and thus has been accepted as niyati or fate. At present time, we are talking about complete transformation of five elements. All solar systems, galaxies, universes and the whole multiverse will be transformed, which hasn't happened before. Till date, no one has given knowledge of transformation as they didn't have such knowledge. Rishis and Munis had knowledge of only one Brahman mentioned in our scriptures. At the most, they know about Lord Brahma, Vishnu and Sankar. They had knowledge of three Gunas, Sattva, Raja and Tamogun. They also had knowledge of periodic destruction events of time, such as Ardhapralay, Kalpapralay, Mahakal Pralay and Mahakal Pralay. Until now, no one had any knowledge beyond this. No one was aware about positive transformation from gross elements to Paramtattva or divine elements. That is why sages just called it Niyati and left it at that. When I was in Brahma Kumari's organization, I used to ask plenty of questions regarding creation of stars, who created them, how and when were they created. Then they said this was all Niyati and advised me not to think too much on these matters. During the years between 1987 to 1993, when I was in Brahma Kumaris, I used to ponder a lot of questions and was always given answer that these all are part of destiny which goes on and on eternally. So what I mean to say is that our scriptures and everyone has focused on Niyati. Whatever happens, they just say, Niyati and left it like that with no knowledge beyond this. 
the facts about creation of our Brahmant, that is our solar system, has been mentioned in the scriptures such as creation through Brahma, maintenance through Vishnu, and destruction through Sankar. However, there is no knowledge beyond this. It has been mentioned in Mahakal Pralai that every second countless solar systems are created and destroyed. But whose one second equals Brahma's hundred years? That has not been written. Therefore, the Gyan, the knowledge of infinite, is different from others. Param Shanti